Hi, welcome back to the class. Uh, this is the first lecture in the first module of Accreditation Professional and Regulatory Organizations. Healthcare quality management is a very involved process and depends on a great deal on coordination of efforts among innumerable organizations and individuals. While it's impossible to list them all, I'll give you a short list to say that you know, pretty much what they represent are health and wellness consumers, which uh, I avoid the use of the term or the word patients because patients tend to insinuate that the person's already ill. Healthcare consumers frequently are not ill and in fact are well and seeking to maintain a level of wellness or at least uh, are functioning at a high level of, of health considering their, their general health overall. Their, these consumers and their families represent one group. Providers and their staffs, uh, providers including physicians, nurses, pharmacists, social workers, occupational therapists, you name it. Uh, hospital systems, clinic systems, uh, pharmacy and durable medical equipment manufacturers and suppliers, insurers and other payers, uh, scientists, legislators, attorneys, jurists, lobbyists, and so many others. And at some level, you have to think about nearly everyone is involved in some aspect of wellness, illness prevention and treatment, as well as payment for and management of care. So this is kind of one of those Tower of Babel situations where you've got to have some sense of order that's lent to it. And this order is lent by the multiple organizations that accredit, regulate, support, and otherwise influence healthcare in the United States. To simplify things, because there's a bunch of them, uh, this course will focus on six of these organizations broken out in three categories. The Joint Commission and the National Committee for Quality Assurance, are the accreditation organizations. The Agency for Health Research and Quality and the National Quality Forum are quality standard setting organizations. And the American Nurses Association and the American Medical Association are professional organizations. In many ways, these organizations drive healthcare practice in the U.S. by influencing and monitoring perceptions of quality. And that's really what quality is all about. Now, in the next lecture, we're going to talk about definitions of quality and how quality is measured and all this stuff. I'm not going into that right now. But I will say that the reality of it is, if you perceive quality, you have quality. If you perceive an absence of quality, you don't have quality, until those perceptions are changed. And that's changed through a combination of education and culture. Um, I believe that you know, thick, rich leather uh, against, uh, in my car it makes for a very high quality car. Uh, I believe that a nurse who can get an IV started on the first stick and with limited pain is a high quality uh, phlebotomist. It, these types of things lend to a perception of quality and perception is reality. The definitions for quality and uh, the, the way that quality is seen really depends on the purpose for which it's being defined. Uh, equivalently, the missions, the visions, the scopes of the accreditation, regulation, regulation, and professional support organizations determine how they perceive quality and ultimately how they do their work. Um, because of the broad range of regulators, I will not go into depth on the regulators of healthcare in the United States. However, the information that I will cover ultimately encompasses the intended outcomes of these regulations and that's what's really important. So I will give you a brief overview of why I'm omitting them, and that is the, if you have to consider that there are healthcare regulators at the municipal, the county, and the state health departments, or their equivalents throughout the country. There are numerous other organizations within each level of government there, and then there's the federal government, which includes the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, uh, which incorporates the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, the Food and Drug Administration, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, and some others. Then there's the Department of Defense, which includes TRICARE. There's the Department of Veterans Affairs. There is the Internal Revenue Service, and there are even others. So as you can see, outlining the several regulatory bodies would go well beyond the scope and intent of this course and, frankly, be a lot of unnecessary work. So the accreditation bodies, which we will cover, uh, have as their primary purpose to ensure that accreditation clients meet the requirements set forth by these regulatory bodies, um, that they meet a standard floor, at least, of safe, high-quality care. Uh, arguably, the Joint Commission is 
the most well-known of the accreditation bodies for hospital and post-hospital care. Its stated mission is to improve health care through a collaboration of stakeholders and by inspiring healthcare organizations to excel in providing high value, high quality care. The Joint Commission inspires this level of care through evaluation against strict standards of excellence with the intent of promoting a vision of healthcare excellence in all settings. The focus on evaluation is pretty consistent with the role of an accreditation organization. It ultimately tells potential consumers and, and the payers that the organization it accredits meets or exceeds certain criteria defining value and quality. Uh, the Joint Commission has a podcast, which I highly recommend you look at. It's a couple of minutes long, like three or four minutes long, called The World of Difference. And this gives some background to their mission and I think is an uh, excellent uh, um, opportunity to see what TJC does. Similarly, the National Committees on Quality Assurance aims to improve healthcare quality through measurement, transparency, and accountability. These two organizations do not have, well, they, they're starting to have some well-defined boundaries, but frankly, their boundaries are still a little nebulous, and so they kind of are pitted against each other in certain areas uh, for competition, which frankly is not a bad thing. Um, TJC has started to accredit uh, outpatient clinics, surgery centers, and that used to be an NCQA domain. Uh, NCQA is uh, now also accrediting or has been accrediting insurers and other payers, which is pretty good. In addition to their accreditation standards, which are very similar to those of the Joint Commission, NCQA has developed some um, um, uh, very important data in the health effect, healthcare effectiveness data and information set. And this is used for benchmarking, uh, report cards, and other quality measurement tools. And the NCQA uses these tools to assess health insurance plan quality for reporting to CMS as part of contracting and quality management of Medicare Advantage or Part C plans. Uh, these plans, for those of you who aren't aware of them, are the ones provided to Medicare beneficiaries who want to have access to holistic and comprehensive care services not provided under, under traditional Medicare hospital insurance and outpatient fee-for-service plans, also known as Medicare Parts A and B, respectively. Uh, additionally, CMS will begin using these HEDA scores to determine quality bonus payments, and um, uh, other parts of uh, pay for performance, which is mandated under the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act, or PPACA, or health reform. And this starts in 2013. Further, employers and healthcare consumers are increasingly incorporating these HEDIS measures and report cards in the value metrics they set for selecting insurers for open enrollment seasons. And as you might expect, these standard setting or these uh, I'm sorry, these accreditation organizations are very uh, involved in ensuring high quality of healthcare. Now, I'm going to um, finish this lecture in another segment because I'm getting ready to go over the time limit that uh, that I'm permitted.